And today we're going to talk about one in particular as we build up these new things. And today we're going to have this guy is our end goal. I like doing this one, and I think everybody should know it because this got somebody killed. So if this is important, this statement is important enough to murder somebody and keep it super secret type of thing, we ought to know it. So we'll kind of go through that entire process. And so I'd like to show something like the square root of 2 is irrational. All right, from last class, we went to this idea of, of building up these ideas of new truths. And so if we're going to do the new truths from old truths, we want to be able to find these new truths, in other words, show them to be actually true. And the first thing we talked about was how do I prove or show when I have implication type problems that are conjectured? All right, so I prove if this, then this type of conjectures. One of the things that happens, what do these look like? We, these are examples of like, whoop, <laughs> All A, R, B. Is that an implication? Everybody just simply say yes. If I say all A, R, B, what does that mean? That means for all objects, if it is an A, then it is a B. Right? So if I would do things like that, if I have an all A, R, B, this is actually an implication. And so we're trying to have, and we would have terms. All right, all A, R, B. If it is an A, then it's a B. That means that the A is the hypothesis, left side and the right hand side is the conclusion. Sometimes we actually have ones that were just simply given B. And you're like, well, what? wait a second. I'm supposed to have A implies B type problems, right? But what if I'm just given the conclusion? In other words, you don't state the hypothesis. You don't state the square side. You don't state the left-hand side, right? What we're trying to do is having that premise, 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 Hence, conclusion. And so what happens is we just simply give the conclusion. This is a common technique of speaking. Common techniques of speaking is just to simply give the answer without the hypothesis because everybody should know what I'm talking about. For example, square root of 2 is irrational. Where in the world is the hypothesis? Well, the square root of a number is who times itself would give me that number. What does it mean to be irrational? It means not rational. What, what's rational? That means it's an integer divided by an integer that have no common factors, and the bottom integer is never 0. Given all that, then the square root of 2 is irrational. Why didn't you say that? You know that, right? Leaving out the hypothesis, the hypothesis calls what is stated is, if it's not stated, it's called enthematic. Enthememes are, supposed, are stuff you know. I don't have to sit there and write this down and say, this is an odd, and this is an odd, and this and this and this is an even. Right? We can just simply leave out the hypothesis and say, all right, doesn't everybody understand this? So I would say things like, you know, the sum of integer, the, the sum property on integers is closed. What's the hypothesis? Well, you have integers. And if you add them, then they would be an integer. That's really what you're saying. Well, why didn't you say that? Well, can't you figure that out? So sometimes you just state the conclusion. And where is the hypothesis? You're supposed to know it. Well, how am I supposed to know it? You have to know enough mathematics or what you're talking about to know what's being applied. So there might be in the memes that you have to worry about. Uh, it's nice when we have like the last class, this is odd and this is odd, then this plus this is odd. That's not stated. Sometimes you, have, you just gave me the conclusion. Then you have to read it. You have to think about it. And you ask, what are the premises? Sometimes the premises are just simply axioms. They're just true. I, I'm OK. I know how to work with it. All right. And third possibility is you actually have an actual implication. <laughs> These are the hypothesis. Show the conclusion. So what are the techniques to show? To prove. We used the first, which was a, a trivial proof. What's a trivial proof? If I have a hypothesis and I have an inclusion, a conclusion, and I want to show that this whole thing is a tautology, that's my, that's my goal. That's what it means to prove. 
What's a trivial proof? You prove that square is false. Well, triangle is true. The triangle is always true, right? I ignoring the hypothesis, the conclusion you're talking about is is true, and it's usually trivially true. So that's why it's called a trivial proof. It's like, oh, that's easy to show true, right? What is a vacuous proof? That whatever the hypothesis is, you said this hypothesis implies the conclusion. The conclusion is meaningless because the hypothesis is false. So you gave me some false, it's like this. You gave a false premise. If you gave a false premise, it's true vacuously. There's nothing for me to do. After that, we talked about a direct proof. What's a direct proof? This actually has some stuff for you to do. What's, what do you do? You assume. is true, and then after you assume that, you use the assumption to show what? <laughs> that the conclusion is true. Let's assume that the hypothesis is true. Well, what if it's false? Then it'd be vacuous. Nothing to do. It's When it's true is when we get to complex. And so let's assume it's true. Given that assumption, let's show that the triangle follows. And we did an example. Let's do another one. So example. Statement. The square of an even number is even. Hmm. What is this as an implication? What is this really stating? If n is even, then n squared is even. See how that means the same thing? If I have an even number and then I square it, it's even. I could think about this in terms of geometrics, right? I have a square. That's why it's called squared, right? To the second power, it's called a square because guess what, it shape, what shape it is? A square. We'll talk about the figure of numbers when we do number theory. In other words, when you do these shapes, the numbers actually form shapes. The Greeks were, had lots of things about numbers. They were, you think we have no numerology, like what's your lucky number for the lottery? They had male numbers. They had female numbers. They had effeminate numbers. They had, you know, they go through all these other sorts of things. These numbers, these are the squares and the triangles and the five-sided polygons and numbers and they kind of just studied it because for them, they thought numbers were the lower part of the entire known universe. And you know, if you think about a, a religion based on that, it's kind of interesting. But anyways, so if n is even, then n squared is even. Uh, it's saying that like if I had a square and the side of the square was even, the area of that square must be an even number as well. That's all this is saying. So how would I prove this directly? What would I assume? Assume n is even. What does that mean? n is equal to what? What does it mean for n to be even? Even numbers are multiples of 2, right? So it's equal to 2 times k, k and integer. That's what it means to be even. What does it mean to be odd? 2k plus, one. 2K plus 1. If you don't like 2k plus 1, you can pick 2k minus 1. Right? 1 before an even or 1 after an even. Those are the odds. doesn't matter. All right, if that's true, what's my goal? What's the end? What am I trying to show? 2k squared. That n squared is even. Do I have n? Yes. Could I make n squared? If n is 2k, n squared would be 2k squared. What is 2k squared? Four k squared. Okay. Again, what am I trying to show? I'm trying to show what? n squared is even. What's an even? Two times an int. Do I have two times an int? What do I actually have? Twice. Is that an integer? K 
is an int. K times K must be an int. 2 is an int. So 2 times k times k must be an int. So this is twice an integer. I'll just write it that way. That's twice an integer. So, so n squared is even. I did what I was supposed to do. Assume n is even. I showed n squared is even. Again, I used my assumption to make this happen. Hmm. I wonder if the flip side works. If I have a square and the side is even, therefore the area must be even. What would happen if I had a square and I said, given the square, I found out that the area is even in some sort of way? What would that tell me about the side? What would your guess be? Seems like it would be, because I know evens times evens is even. So that's the only way I could get it, right? Because what's, what's odd times odd? It's odd. And since there's only even and odd, so I would, well, what about what's odd times even? Well, then it wouldn't be a square, <laughs> right? Odd times even is even, but odd times even is not a square because that's two completely different numbers. And there isn't a number that's both odd and even at the same time. And so I would guess that the side is even. But how do I prove that? Don't write anything down yet, because we're going to come to a screeching halt. All right, so I'm going to assume what? What does that mean? For some int k, n squared is 2k. Here's my problem. What am I supposed to do? From this assumption, I need to get n is even. That wasn't too hard, given this assumption, to get to n squared. Because I have algebra, right? How do I go from n to n squared? Square it. It's not going to cause any problems. Just multiply something by itself and it's equal and it ends up working. All right, what about this? What's my goal? n. So you have n squared. How can I go from n squared to n? Square root it. That would imply that n is going to be equal to the square root of 2k. Is that even an int? I don't know. I have no idea. In other words, uh oh, n squared being even, that's not always n squared being even. n squared can be even, but it's only going to be even for certain special evens. I don't even know what they are, though. Right? Like no square has an area of integers, a, no square with integer size is going to have an area of 6. How did you know that? I might try to work it out, right, and try to show it you know, physically. But there's something more complicated on. When I say n, n squared is equal to 2k, that's true. But this is far more complicated. And if I take the square root of both sides, yeah, there's no 2 here. I don't know what to do. So we're kind of stuck. And it's like, how can I show n equals twice an int? I have no idea how to have that happen. I'm stuck. So this didn't work. All right, direct proof failed, because I don't know how to do it. It's too complicated. But I do have logical equivalencies. So my statement is, if n squared is even, then n is even. What is that logically the same as? Let's say all I can prove is implication. Could I rewrite that implication as something else? In other words, this is, so I'm stuck here. But on the other hand, I know, but I know that if I want to show this, isn't that logically the same as not the right implies not the left? Right? That's, contra that's the contrapositive. All right. So what happened? Prove this implication. I can't. It's too hard. All right, fine. Let's restate it. 
So that would tell me that if n squared is even implies n is even, that entire thing is, I don't need the if since I have the implication, that is logically the same as what? Right? Why is it, well, this will be important just for a second. I'll write it this way. It is not the case that n is even implies it is not the case that n squared is even. Now, because numbers only have two possibilities, even and odd. What if the question was that, let's say n is blah, blah, had three possibilities. Let's call it, let's say numbers are either blah, blah, so they're either blah one, blah two, or blah three. And I said, it's supposed to be blah one. And then you would flip it. No, it's not blah one. Well, that would mean that you didn't have one case, you would have two cases. So you would say n is either blah two or blah three. But for us, there's only two possibilities. It's not true that it's that it's even. They're either even or odd. <laughs> so I have the other the other single option. That'll be important because we will have that. We'll have things like it's supposed to be this. Well, the other option, there's five other possibilities. Start testing. Test all other five. Anyways, this is logically the same as n is odd implies n squared is odd. Are those logically the same? Absolutely. If I can prove the bottom, have I proved the top? Everybody say yes. Yes. If the bottom is true, the top is true. All right, so let's prove that. Proof. What am I going to assume? N is odd. What does that mean? You want to do a minus one? Sure. Doesn't matter. So 2k minus 1, k and int. Is everybody okay with me having that entire statement? All right, now, boy, isn't that nicer? If n is odd, then n squared is odd. Is it easy to go from n to n squared? Yes. So that implies that n squared is 2k minus 1 squared. But that says n squared is equal to what? Square that. 4k squared. Minus 4k plus 1. All right, here's where plus 1 might have been better on us. But on the other hand, what is this? This is equal to twice 2k squared minus 2k plus 1. And what is this? And now, really, it's no odd. And this is where you remember odds are either 2k minus 1 or 2k plus 1. It doesn't matter. Right? Plus 1 would have been nicer because we have that plus 1 and it's plus 1, right? But is everybody okay with this? So n squared is equal twice an int plus 1, which is an odd, right? Because odds are either 2k plus 1 or minus 1, it doesn't matter. And so n squared is odd. So what have I proved? Actually, you get two for the price of one. What have you proved? If n is odd, then n squared is odd. What else have I proved? Because it's logically the same. If n squared is even, then n is even. That tells you if you get a square and it has an even area, the side must be even length. That's what we've just shown. Okay.